Okay, here. Nice. Right. Yeah, this is part of your lecture. Okay, I need to know what's going on. Okay, very good day to Madam Pang and all my fellow classmates. Thank you for attending. My name is Darren Lee. Uh, and my name is Liang Musiang. Today we are going to present on the diesel power station and we are from the banana group. Now before we start the presentation, let me ask you one question on diesel engine. Sure. Do you know who invented the diesel engine? Mm, is it the wind diesel from the Fast and Furious? Um, this guy without a hat? Yes, no, I'm sure it's him. not me. Are you sure? Sure. Not me la. That's why you say you heard it. You why not him? Because that's not the correct answer. Now let me tell you who invented this. Yes. Actually, Randolph Diesel, born 1858, died in 1930. Now why am I telling you this? Because diesel engine has been around for a very long time. Not something we made yesterday or last week. Now knowing this historical fact, let's proceed into the basic function of the diesel generation system. And before this, let me give a short explanation on the diesel generation system. Actually, it is a generating station where the diesel engine is used as a primary mover for the generation of the electrical energy. By doing this, let us proceed to the layout of diesel engine power plant. Now as you can see, there are a few systems in this diagram and we will talk about those that are highlighted in here. So let's start off with the fuel supply system, which is, consists of the fuel storage tank, filter, pump, and also a day tank. Now what happens here in the fuel supply system is that the fuel from the storage tank will go into the filter and through the pump and it will be sent to the day tank. And this process will happen several times a day, hence the name day tank. And what happens next is that the fuel injection pump will take the fuel from the day tank into the engine. And that brings us to our second system, the air intake system, consisting of the air filter, air compressor, and also a starting air tank. Now what happens here in the air intake system is that the air will be taken in and then filtered so that the air is clean for the combustion process later on in the diesel engine. And now let's take a look at the diesel engine. Alright, as you know that the diesel engine switch at here is the main component to develop the power. And the actual process that occurs in this diesel engine is the air from the air intake system will be sent into the cylinder and it will be compressed until very high pressure and increase the temperature of it. Besides that, the fuel from the fuel storage tank will also be inject inserted, injected into this cylinder and it is burned under the high temperature of the air which causes the expansion of the air in order to do the work on the piston and also turn over the engine shaft. And this will lead to the generation of the power, which is the mechanical power that used to generate the electrical energy. And of course, there will be an exhaust system that lead the exhaust gas out of the building. And normally, a silencer, which is at the top there, is incorporated in this system in order to reduce the noise level. Now, let us move on to the lubricating system. Yes, now, looking at this lubricating system, you can see that there's a lubricating oil tank, obviously, and an oil pump, oil cooler. Now, what happens in the lubricating system is that the lubricating oil from the tank will go through the oil pump, into the cooler, and then into the engine where the lubrication of various engine parts will take place. And then after that, the lubricating oil will go back into the lubricating oil tank and this process is being repeated. Now what the oil cooler does here is to keep the lubricating oil at lower temperatures so that the lubrication process will be much smoother. And now let's take a look at the cooling system. Yes, for this cooling system, which is consists of the water source, pump, heat exchangers, and the cooling tower. And for your information, during the power generation process, the heat released by the burning of the fuel is not is only partially will be converted into the wall. And the remaining heat process will be passed through the cylinder wall, piston, and ring. And this will bring serious damage to the system itself. So now it's the role for the cooling system to take part in order to maintain the temperature within the set operating limit. And now that brings me to one question. Can you explain how this cooling system works? Oh sure, but I only explain one, so you listen, listen, listen. Okay, it's very simple, the operation of this system, which is the pump will circulate the cool water through the diesel engine and absorb the heat from it. Then the hot water will be sent back to these cooling towers to cool it. And this cooling system will be repeated again and again. So that's basically all for our part of the basic function of diesel generation system. We will now, pa we will now pass our time to the next set of presenters. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now, again, welcome to the presentation brought to you by Banana Groups. And now, I wish 
and one six two. We are going to talk about the advantages of no, diesel power plant. As you can see here, the first one, which is at the top left, diesel power plant have a simple design and layout. As the design and layout are simple, the auxiliary sizes are small. Therefore, the space needed to build this power station is uh, quite low. Moreover, the diesel power plant also do not have standby losses. Yes, and the next few uh, advantages are to compare with a steam power station. First of all, the thermal efficiency is higher than a steam power station. This diesel power plant also only need a few people to operate it. As the operating staff are uh, needed is uh, less lesser than a steam power station, the overall cost for it is also quite low. For the last one, this diesel power plant able to start quickly and pick up load in a short time. That's all for the advantages. Now we move on to another topic. Okay, now we are going to talk about the advantages and also the side effects. First of all, uh, diesel power station runs on high running charges. Why is that so? It's because of the fuel that is used which is diesel is very costly. The high running charges also due to the maintenance and lubrication cost which is very high. And also the diesel power station cannot uh, cannot work efficiently under <laughs> under overload condition for a long period. This diesel station is also able to generate a very small power as it can only be constructed in small sizes. And next are the effects towards the environment. As you can see here, some pollution. Some pollution is uh, like what is mentioned just now, the noise level, from the noise produced from the diesel engine will cause some pollution to the area where it uh, is near to the, the power station. <coughs> Moreover, the diesel fuel also have a high carbon content which is also will lead to emission of more carbon dioxide when compared to other fuels such as gasoline. Alright, to add on that, um, diesel power station also emits cancer causing chemicals such as benzene from the diesel exhaust that may, may affect the, the health of the people that stays near to the, the power station. As you can see here, cancer causing. Alright, that's all for the disadvantages and also the side effects of the diesel power station. Now we move on to strength to reduce the side effects. As you can see here for the first one, detergent additive. This detergent additive is able to make sure your engine is clean by removing the oil disposed on the fuel injector which also will uh, increase your efficiency. And next one is the diesel particulate filter. As you all know what, uh, what is the use of a filter, right? Oh, okay. The main use of a filter is to, to filter out the unwanted substance, right? So uh, here, the diesel particulate filter is to filter out the particulate matter from the exhaust stream by means of physical filtration. Next, combustion chamber modification. By modifying this combustion chamber, we are able to increase or maximize the, the combustion rate and the efficiency. Right. Next is the sound attenuation. As, you, as what is mentioned just now in the function part, a silencer is used at the at the diesel uh, engine part to reduce the stop, the noise level to a significant extent. We can also formulate a newer type of diesel, which is low in sulfur content, and this will also decrease the emissions of exhaust gases. And last but not least is the selective. And uh, the selective catalytic reduction, which is also known as the SCR. SCR is uh, they use reducing catalysts such as anhydrous and also aqueous ammonia to break down the nitrogen oxide uh, emitted into diatomic nitrogen and also water. And that's all for the steps to reduce the side effects. Now we we'll pass on to the next set of presenters to present on the feasibility of this power plant in Malaysia. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> guys, you guys are boring, right? So, can I have an icebreaking session with you all? So, when I say C, you guys say Jabo, okay? Jabo! C, Jabo! That's his name. And my name is Yokin Hong. 
So today we would like to present to you about the feasibility of the diesel power station in Malaysia. And this is one of the example of diesel power plant located in power of the Sabah State. So first of all, we received this topic last week and by last week I asked and questioned Jiao is this diesel power station really applicable in Malaysia? And he told me yes, but I disagree with him. So in these seven days time, we have do the research from the online and also from the books and finally we come to a conclusion that yes, this is really practical in Malaysia. And why do we say so? First, the diesel power station acts as a backup and standby power for other power stations. Sometimes, emergency methods could be happen such as breakdown. For example, if breakdown happens in the hospital, all the devices and the equipment cannot function. This is not just cause the lost power, but also cause the life threatening towards the patient. At this moment, at this moment, <laughs> the diesel power station plays an important role to supply the power back to the hospital so that the hospital can be running properly. Yeah, why do you think that the diesel power station festival in Malaysia? In my opinion, I think that it's very critical that the diesel power station is actually independent from the weather influence. So what does this mean? This simply means by diesel power station does not require any the help of the weather such as in here give you an example the wind energy so in order for a country to generate the electricity from the wind it requires to receive a certain amount of wind in order for them to produce the electricity but in case in here the diesel power station we do not need to do so what we have to do is only to use the diesel which is extracted from the petroleum and as you know Malaysia is one of the exporter and producer of petroleum so we are actually rich in natural resources we definitely can do this very well and in extra if a power station has to build up or install in Malaysia, we also have to consider those environmental factors and also social factors. For example, we do not want those pollution to occur. And you know that this diesel power station will generate a certain amount of noise level which will definitely, certainly and absolutely affect the activities of human beings. So the next thing is, Java we would like to discuss with you more details about the power supply for a remote area. Okay, as you know, there are many small villages in Malaysia, especially in Sabah and Sarawak. Those villages cannot get the power supply easily because they are isolated far, far, far away from the city, maybe called zombie, they also. Since the power consumption in the village is low, instead of build a much more complicated power station, why not we just build a diesel power station that already enough to supply the power to the village? Furthermore, if you want to run some quite big events such as concert that are located far away from the city in Malaysia, you may use this diesel power station to supply the power. Let us come to the conclusion. Diesel power station is necessary and is meant for standby and backup power. In the future, many research and investigation can be done to further improve the quality of diesel power station by reducing the cost and the environmental impact such as sound pollution. Okay, back to the point, diesel power station has one of the highest efficiencies of generating systems. And here also, education has come together and plays an important role that as we all are here, we are learning the introduction to electrical power and machines. In this subject, we actually learn how a circuit works and definitely we have to do so, we have to learn it well in order for us to know the basic knowledge and in future we might also improve and enhance the system. So in here, last but not least, I urge everybody in here to actually really pay attention and effort in this subject in order for you to succeed in the future. Thank you.